Scientists around the world are racing to find a vaccine against COVID-19, or at least a drug that can treat the illness. There is no time to lose. The number of new cases keeps rising, and with it, the death toll. But we're not entirely at the mercy of the coronavirus. Apart from crucial measures such as cleaning our hands and keeping our distance, we also possess our very own defense mechanism, our immune system. Its job is to recognize harmful substances and germs that enter the body and fight the intruders. The stronger our immune system, the better it can do its job. The question is, can it also protect us from COVID-19? Welcome to our COVID-19 special here on DW News. I'm Monica Jones in Berlin. Good to have you with us. A healthy immune system is always important and it might just save your life now during the pandemic. But how do you keep it strong? Take a walk in the park, eat plenty of fruits and vegetables. In a moment, we'll ask an expert, but first this report. The human immune system. The body's various defensive mechanisms protect us from pathogens like bacteria and viruses. Our skin, bone marrow and saliva, as well as a host of immune cells, contribute to a highly complex system. The world around us offers ways in which we can boost that system. And in the face of coronavirus, researchers are seeking help from nature. For example, from plants. There are indications in work from Indonesia, China and Vietnam that substances that we already know as having antiviral effects in the case of the flu may also be effective against COVID-19. For instance, the African geranium, which is thought to help the lungs. An extract from its root boosts the activity of the hair-like structures on the linings of the airways. That clears out infected mucus, making pathogens less likely to gain a foothold. It's been shown in various laboratory studies that they have a fundamentally good antiviral power. They're effective against herpes and influenza viruses. So for us, that makes the geranium, or perlagonium, one of the most important candidates for closer examination. Help can also come from on high. The sun provides us with vitamin D, which is essential to our immune systems. It's mostly absorbed through the skin. But in parts of the world where sunlight is scarce, it can be difficult to get enough. At the opposite end of the temperature spectrum is cold water. The technique of kniping involves letting 17 degree water run across your face repeatedly. The blood vessels first contract, then expand, allowing more blood to flow through them. This improves the blood supply to the nose, the throat and the inside of the mouth, enabling more defense cells to form there. So whether it's cold water, the burning hot sun or blooming plants, our immune systems can take strength from the natural world. So nature can boost our immune system and a strong immune system keeps us healthy, more or less. Let's find out more from an expert. I'm joined by Alexander Michaels. He's a research associate and communications officer for the Linus Pauling Institute at Oregon State University in the United States. Good to have you with us. Uh, first of all, your research, I believe, focuses on micronutrients, that's vitamins and minerals such as zinc, iron and so forth. What do these substances have to do with the immune system? Well, the immune system uh, is a, an elaborate network of uh, different biological systems that are helping to keep us free from germs, from viruses and bacteria. And whether it's to keep them out of our bodies or, or attack them when they, uh, when they invade our bodies. And so the vitamins and minerals that we eat um, uh, basically bolster that network and help us fight off things more effectively and efficiently without doing undue harm to our own bodies. Can we overdo it? When you say the vitamins and, and, and uh, the minerals and everything that we eat, can we overdo it there? 
Yeah, not not if you're taking food. Um, you know, if you're if you're just getting your vitamins and minerals from the food that you eat, um, you're you're a little harm of overdoing it. Uh, however, you're probably at risk of not getting enough. Um, so if you're taking supplements, um, unless you're taking high doses of vitamins and minerals, you're probably not overdoing it. Uh, if you stay within uh, government guidelines, you're probably fine. Now, certain vitamins act differently than others. Vitamin C, which is where my background is, um, has a very low level of toxicity. So when you take large doses of vitamin C, uh, there's usually no or few negative side effects, but other vitamins are different. For example, vitamin E uh, that is fat soluble and gets stored in your body for long periods of time. You don't, you really need to take caution with those kinds mm. of vitamins and, and several minerals as well. Okay. Uh, I mean, obviously, we hear again and again, it's very important to strengthen your immune system, but that sounds somewhat abstract. I mean, when do we actually talk about an immune system being strong and how long does it last? Well, an immune system being strong is is an immune system that is able to meet the challenges that it faces. Um, that that's generally the our general definition of a strong immune system. If it, if it's capable of mounting an appropriate response. Now, everything that we encounter in our daily lives will challenge our immune system, including stresses. Uh, if we're under any sort of stress, our immune system is going to suffer. Um, so we try to minimize our stresses and maximize the uh, foundation on the immune system, uh, which includes nutrition, but it also includes other things. Um, you know, healthy diet, exercise are, are also part of a vital immune system. Um, you know, it, but how long does a strong immune system last? Um, that just depends on uh, from a day-to-day -day evaluation of how many stresses you're under and how well you're t maintaining or taking care of your body and also, you know, what's attacking it at a given time. All right. So I can't just say I have a strong immune system and it stays that way. I really have to, to work right. on it. So what a role does nutrition play in supporting our immune system against COVID-19 then? That's a, that's a great question, and we're still trying to figure that one out. Um, we have some ideas on various components that can help, but the individual parts of our, our nutrition framework, uh, we really don't know. We're, we're, we're still working on that because COVID-19 is such a new virus, and, and uh, SARS, uh, which came before it, was not widely studied. Um, we don't exactly know which parts of the new immune system, so we're, or immune system or nutrition will be effective. So we try to take a, a general approach, anything that will in general support your immune system. And this is just a good time for people to look at the recommendations, uh, find vitamins and minerals they may be falling short on, and bolster up those areas where they, they feel like they're not doing as well. All right, Alexander Michaels there from the Linus Pauling Institute at Oregon State University. Thank you so much for your time. Time now to answer your questions about COVID-19. Over to our science correspondent, Derek Williams. Can COVID-19 antibody tests differentiate between infections with SARS-CoV-2 and other coronaviruses? Antibodies are highly specific proteins made by the body as part of its immune response to a pathogen. And, and they help it recognize and wipe out a bug if you're infected with it again within a certain amount of time. So detecting the presence of antibodies in someone's blood that, that are linked to SARS-CoV-2 is at least in theory proof that they had COVID-19, even if they didn't notice it. Um, but tests for antibodies to SARS-CoV-2 are, of course, not perfect. And ones that are, are sensitive enough, but not always quite specific enough, can also give a positive result if they detect antibodies, for example, to coronaviruses like those that cause colds, which are, which are closely related to SARS-CoV-2. So, so while most antibody tests usually work as advertised, um, they, do, they don't always. Is it true that groups of people who are taking hydroxychloroquine for other reasons are not getting COVID-19? 
This is another of those rumors not based on, on scientific studies. Um, we've learned a couple of things about hydroxychloroquine so far. One is that it doesn't have an effect on mortality if you're already seriously ill. A second thing is that any benefits also appear negligible in what's called post-exposure. So in people who took the drug after being exposed to COVID-19, but, but people who didn't yet show symptoms. Um, but what about if someone has been taking hydroxychloroquine before exposure to COVID-19? For example, to treat the autoimmune disease uh, lupus, so a pre-exposure prophylactic. Several teams are looking into that as well, and, and there are some large trials going on. But, but one initial study was unfortunately not very positive. Um, according to it, plenty of lupus sufferers who regularly took hydroxychloroquine have come down with COVID-19 as well. So, so I wouldn't hold my breath that pre-exposure treatments with hydroxychloroquine are going to keep you from getting COVID-19. Should I invest in a UVC box to disinfect my phones, keys, wallet, glasses, and masks? Ultraviolet radiation in a certain part of the spectrum called UVC um, is often used to disinfect places like, like operating rooms in hospitals. And the pandemic has seen an explosion of products harnessing the technology for, for use in the home as well. The problem is that many of those products could pose a health threat because exposure to UVC radiation doesn't just kill microbes, um, it can harm human skin as well. Sterilizing boxes that are sold commercially should at least be safe if they've been certified by a government agency and you properly follow the instructions for their use. But bear in mind that, that based on what we know right now about transmission via surfaces, you're much, much more likely to get COVID-19, for example, from air in enclosed spaces than you are from your keys. So although it might not hurt to buy one, I don't know how much protection something like a UVC box would actually offer. Um, I, I guess probably not that much. <laughs>